Hello and welcome to Traeger Kitchen Live. Uh, you may recognize me as the season 10 winner of MasterChef. I am Chef Dorian Hunter. And today I have with me my good friend, Dennis Prescott. Dennis, you want to introduce yourself? For sure. Uh, thank you for having me. Thanks. Yes, I, yes, I, yes. I could not be any more excited to be here. Uh, my name is Dennis Prescott. I'm a chef, cookbook author, and TV host. Uh, more than that, yes. I love Traeger Grills so much. They make my food better. I know they make your food better. Yes. I know they make your food better if you're watching. Yes. Uh, and I'm super excited about what we're going to do for the next about an hour or so. We're going to make recipes that we love, recipes that we love to make specifically this time of year. You can make them any time of the year, uh, but they're family style, they're meant to feed a hungry crowd, yes. uh, and they're absolutely packed with seasonal deliciousness. Right, this menu speaks summer. It like yells it, like summer? Yeah, it, it screams really, it, it actually. It screams it, screams summer. So today, let's talk about what we're gonna be making. Right now in front of us, we have this beautiful cocktail, which is a grilled peach smash. We are gonna be having roasted heirloom tomatoes uh, with roasted uh, peaches. I'm getting ahead of myself, but no, it's, it's, fine. it's the cocktail. It's fine, yeah. <laughs> it's the cocktail. Did you take a drink of that before uh, you just started? Just a little or? sip, just a little sip. We're gonna have smoked ratatouille, smoked chicken and chimichurri. Come on, skirt steak with grilled peach salsa. Man, this, re this menu, it, it speaks summer, it speaks light. Um, nothing really heavy and the best thing that I love about these recipes is that they're interchangeable so you can customize them to however you like. Yeah and that's the thing I mean all of these recipes we're making them with what's in season right now we already said peaches uh, of course as you go across a lot of America peaches stone fruit in season ripe juicy delicious right. uh, heirloom tomatoes eggplants zucchini I think you're gonna pull out after yes. uh, you can certainly make most of these recipes in January too you just mix it up with what's available right. uh, wh where you live when it, the best is the best and when it's available at the market right. uh, so don't kind of feel like you're held into these ingredients. Really make them your own. And we're just here to inspire you, hopefully to spend some more time at the grill, some more time ultimately at the table, eating with the people you love. Definitely, definitely. Seasonal. That's the word for today, seasonal. 100%. All right, so I know we're both great. We're terrific. Not tooting our own horns here, but toot toot. But we could not do this. You without... can toot a little harder. Okay, it's fine. toot. Okay, you want to. <laughs> we could not do this, and we would not be as successful as we're going to be yeah. without the amazing Traeger culinary team. They will be coming in and out to help us out here so we, that we can have this beautiful spread at the end. So thank you to Traeger and to the Traeger culinary team for all their hard work making this episode possible. Yeah, I mean, it's, it really takes, it's a village to, to pull something off like this. And Definitely. I think uh, often we watch something online, we watch something on social media. We yeah. kind of, we forget that, yeah, there might be one person in front of the camera, right. but usually there's a whole army of people behind that really make this happen. So uh, thank you to them. And, you know, comment below in, in the comment section. Let them, let, you know, with the good folks at Traeger and the culinary team, the video team, everybody behind the scenes, the marketing team, know that you're super appreciative for them putting on these events because they are awesome. Uh, speaking of, Traeger.com yes. is a wealth of uh, just resources, knowledge, recipes, everything that you want to learn about the grills, of course, that we're cooking on, like today, we're cooking on the all new Timberline XL. It's an absolute rock star Thanks. grill. If you've never seen it, go check it out. But definitely make sure that you become well acquainted with Traeger.com. Uh, obviously, YouTube, you might be watching this on YouTube right now. Uh, so definitely you want to subscribe there on all the other social apps. There's right. a bunch. We all know what they are. Right. Uh, we're on all of them. <laughs> right. uh, and just really stay connected because there's a ton of resources there to really just help you so that you're a better cook tomorrow than you are today. Right. And while we are doing our thing here, you will be able to ask us questions in real time. So please, in the chat, do not hesitate. Um, no question is too big and no question is too small. Uh, we want to have that interaction with you while we're doing what we do. So, um, yeah. yeah, let's talk about this cocktail. For sure. I, I love peaches. I love peaches. And I am from a very beautiful and very remote part of, uh, comparatively remote part of the east coast of Canada where peaches do not, we've got that cold, you know, northeastern wind that blows right. through and it's not the optimal climate for peach growing. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that you have had more access to beautiful peaches in your life though. Yes, yes, yes. I am a adopted Georgia peach. 
Yes, I, I, I did that adoption myself, most definitely. And this cocktail definitely speaks to that mm. for me, for me. Um, what we have in here is some beautiful smoked simple syrup, which mm. most people may not even think of smoking their simple syrup for an added level of flavor. And Traeger makes a beautiful smoked simple syrup. So we have smoked simple syrup, mm. some grilled muddled peaches in here with some bourbon. Um, now you can take this and change it up however you want to, right? So if you are not a big stone fruit fan, you can add any other types of fruits you want. Just make sure that you put it on your Traeger to yeah. get that little kiss of smoke to yeah. add to that that extra level of flavor and yeah. taste. It's that like kiss of deliciousness, high yes. five of deliciousness, whatever you want to call it. Right, right. For, right. for me, the thing is, is I think often we get caught in maybe a rut, maybe a stopgap, whatever you want to call it, right. of I've got my 10 recipes that I cook on the grill right. and that's kind of it. The reality is once you close the, the lid of this, it becomes an oven. So anything that you want to do in a traditional oven, whether it's chocolate chip cookies or cake uh, or whatever, you can right. do it in there. You can grill anything you want in there. From a cocktail side of things, I, I mean, I'm a big whiskey sour fan or a bourbon sour fan. Uh, so I love to uh, add some smoke to citrus, right. put it on there. Really anything that you can add that extra little bit of kind of je ne sais quoi to, right. it's oh, just going to take your recipe to the next you level. You took it all the way there like that? What? Je ne sais quoi. I'll pull out the French every now and again. <laughs> you did. Je you parle français moi, un petit peu. <laughs> okay. That was good. Je suis pas acadienne, mais j'habite en Nouveau-Brunswick. Oh, so we know that um, adding that char adds flavor. Yes. And um, when you do that with fruit, not only does it add that smokiness, but it actually enhances the sweetness of the fruit. Yeah, that's So right. it's always good to try your fruit a different way, especially if you've always had it one way, why not try another way? So for right now, we're going to go and ask our social media if we have any questions thus far. Well, if people aren't bourbon fans, bourbon fans, what other liquor can they use? I would say vodka. Mm -hmm. um, and that's probably as far as I go because I'm not a big, look, I'm not the drinker. I'm the drink maker. Yeah. So I, I have to live to tell a story. <laughs> I'll get you done and over that, over that line. Yeah. But um, I would say vodka would be something that I would go to for this drink. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm, you can be the drink maker and I'll be the drinker and the thinker and I'll think <laughs> next day about how I shouldn't have drank as many cocktails. Right. But uh, for me, I mean, whiskey is beautiful. Obviously, yeah. we've got bourbon in here. Right. Uh, I might even do a nice single malt in here would be lovely. Okay. Uh, it kind of depends on, you know, it's something you're adding that beautiful kind of what you want to think about for me anyway, when it uh -huh. comes to cocktails is cocktails have like four or five ingredients. Right. So you want them all to be complementary. Right. You want that sweet element. We've got that smoky element, that right. charred element that's going to come off of whatever we put on the grill. Right. Uh, you might want to add a little sweetness to it. It can be a smoked simple syrup that's beautiful. If you don't have access or the time mm -hmm. to, to, to prepare one, maybe just some maple syrup, really just things that are complimentary for me. Right. Uh, but I'm a big bourbon fan, so I'm going to go bourbon all day long. Right. And for this drink, you can definitely taste that smoke. So you have those layers of smoke in there. You can really taste it. but even more so you really get that beautiful peach flavor in this drink. For sure. All well, right. I mean, we, we've talked about it long enough. Yes, we have. Cheers. Yes. I've already took a little sip. Oh. Right. You're sneaking in advance. Right. So before we get too twisted, that <laughs> let's get on to this absolute beautiful menu. Um, you are going to first cook a beautiful grilled peach panzanella salad. So let's talk about it. Yeah. Let's go. 100%. So this, if you've never heard of a Pantanella salad, the kind of the, the quick overview, uh, the cliff notes, I used to say Coles notes because that, that's what we have in Canada. Right. The cliff notes are, uh, it is a tomato and bread salad. It comes from Tuscany, comes from the, the countryside. It is as classic as a classic recipe can be. It's right. been around for generations. And the thing about this really, it was created as a way to celebrate tomato season, which mm -hmm. we're in right now. Yes. So definitely. where we've got beautiful, as you can see, tomatoes in front of us, heirloom tomatoes, oh. all of the colors of the rainbow on there. Uh -huh. They're going to taste incredible. Right. Uh, and leftover bread. Right. So the big way is we want to be sustainable. We want to find a way to waste less food. Right. How do we do that? Panzanella salad. So I'm going to do it today with these beautiful peaches. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, if you have access to, uh, you know, if you want other stone fruit uh, because you don't have peaches available in your area, switch it up. In the fall, I often will use like butternut squash that's roasted in this. Uh -huh. You just kind of make it your own. But as a base, you got to have tomatoes for me right. and you got to have bread. Right. 
So the first thing we're going to do, we've got this beautiful... You want me to grab that? No, we're going to go with this one oh, first, okay. and then we'll go to this one. All right. We've got this beautiful ciabatta chibata bread. Love you can it. hear that. Mm -hmm. It's a little old, which is great. That's what we want. Okay. So nothing fancy. We're literally just going to rip this apart. You want to make this as absolute rustic as possible right. for me. You know, right. I find family, family style approachable recipes, Love you it. really want them rustic. So literally just rip this up. Right. What you want to do after this, so we're just going to basically just toss this on a sheet pan. Uh -huh. Of course, we've got our Ironwood XL preheated over here. We've got it at 425 degrees. Yes. We are going to cook these just until they're golden, beautiful, delicious, okay. and they're real crispy. Okay. We're going to add a vinaigrette to it after. So, of course, when you add a vinaigrette to something, uh, it's going to come soggy. Yeah. So you want these to be crispy. You want them to get golden and beautiful. It's going to help them to stand up. I'm not a big fan of soggy bread. I don't know about you. I do not like soggy bread. So I'm we're really going to go in like here. Soggy crouton. Now, let me ask you, when yep. you're making these croutons, is it OK? You know, a lot of people add herbs, but could I add like parm to them? And still get them nice and crispy or do they is this just pretty straight and forward you can definitely do that i mean for me i would add that cheese element right at the end okay and then and then kind of go from there okay you notice i put a lot of oil in this a lot. there's definitely someone who's going to go wow why did you use so much oil bread is is a soaker of everything right so it's going to really so you need to almost go over with the oil to get that crispiness right we've got some beautiful rosemary on here and the oil is going to help it get crispy through and through. A hundred percent. For me, I want crispiness on every oh, single bite. So good, Rosemary. Oh. It's absolutely it. It's I would have a so candle good. of this going if I could <laughs> in my house. We're going to go in with a little bit of salt. People often don't think I've got to season you that do. bread. You do. You, you definitely want that. Definitely. A little bit of cracked black pepper on here. Yeah. And then that would go on the grill. Basically, I mean, it's gonna go in until it gets nice and crispy, probably 20, 25 minutes. Right. Just wanna keep an eye on it and go from there. Okay. Of course, our incredible Traeger Ooh, Culinary Team They're so beautiful. has just handed these in. So you can see how just lovely and golden that these are. That's exactly right. what you want. Right. If you wanna do this in advance too, definitely feel free that you can make this in advance, pop it on your counter. It's good to go once it's time. We want food and our cooking time to be as stress-free as possible, right. of I'm, course. I'm more than certain if you did these too far ahead of time, there wouldn't be any left for the salad. I, I am a big fan of like the Martha Stewart model of cooking, one for me and one for the dish. <laughs> so that's both challenging and lovely it at the same time. It would be one for me and, I mean, two for me and one for the dish, really. Yeah, I would yeah. probably eat that whole thing. 100%. Yeah. So we've got these beautiful peaches yeah. that are Perfect, perfect right now. Yeah. I am just gonna literally take these over here onto this board. Okay. We're gonna make these nice and charred. Nice. They're not gonna take a long time. Not at all. Uh, but what that's gonna do, that nice little bit of color and char obviously is gonna add an incredible depth of flavor to this. Yeah. I'm gonna hit it with just the smallest little bit of oil. Yeah. Now, do you have to add oil? Nope. Okay. You definitely don't. So would you say if you're doing something like this, which is almost on the savory side, right? Mm you would add oil but if i'm gonna make this drink i wouldn't dare add oil because it's a drink yeah i would say like many things it's food specific right you know recipe exactly. specific exactly exactly now the firmness of my fruit is definitely important when you're grilling you don't want it too you want it kind of like that that fine line you don't want it too soft and you don't want it too firm you want them to be ripe, but you don't want them mushy that's right, a hundred percent. You want them ripe, you want them beautiful, you want them juicy, right. but not to the point where it's get, you know, if they're too juicy, maybe you want to use that in something like a salsa. Right. That's a flash forward to about 20 <laughs> minutes from now, my beautiful right, friends. Right, right. Or into the cocktail. A hundred percent. Yeah, that would be great. So we're just going to take these off of here. So of course, salad, you need a dressing, you need a vinaigrette. Right. right. My, f I want to make this as easy as possible, of course, right. to throw together. Yeah. That for me is the best way to okay. cook anything. Nice little bowl. So what we're gonna go in here, we've got some garlic. Mm -hmm. Garlic and shallots in a vinaigrette are absolute best friends. Right. I'm a big garlic, are you a garlic fan? I, look, I use elephant garlic on everything. Have you ever seen one of those things? Like, it's like three cloves of garlic in one. So yes, I love garlic. So you, yeah, so you, so you, <laughs> you mess around with garlic a little bit. <laughs> shallots, of course, classic. We're gonna go in there. We've got a beautiful whole grain mustard. It's so beautiful. Lovely. Love it. If, you know, not everybody's a fan of that, you know, heavy, hard hitting Dijon. Right. Whole grain is a beautiful kind of way it's to. It's a nice alternative. It is for sure. Maple syrup, leaning into 
the part of the world that I'm from. Yes. Of course. Uh, being from east, the east coast of Canada, I would actually do that elf scene where I put maple syrup onto <laughs> pasta. Probably, I'd try it. Try it. Oh. Lemon juice in here. Yeah. And that's it. We're just going to bring that together with a whisk. Right. And our oil. I'm just trying to slowly go in here. We're not doing this, you know, in the classic kind of vinaigrette sense in that we want it entirely emulsified, but right. we want a little creaminess in right. here. Exactly. So basically, you just want to go in really slowly, work that into the the vinaigrette, and that's it. Simplest right. vinaigrette you're ever gonna make. And honestly, the thing is, when you have tomatoes that look like this, when you have the grilled peaches, when you have this beautiful, uh, these beautiful croutons, you don't need a lot. No, you don't. And I was just saying, like, I don't understand why. I mean, convenience is one thing, but making your own vinaigrette and your own dressings are like absolutely amazing. A hundred percent. They're so much better than what you get in a store. There, there's no point to me in, in I, I mean, I, if, you know, in a pinch I get why they exist, of course. Yeah, of course. Last thing we're going to do, salt, of course, pepper. That looks beautiful in itself. And taste. The thing that you want to do, I mean, we're going to say it a lot, a little more pepper. We're going to say it a lot over the next little bit. You want to taste it every step. Every step. Along the way. Layers. You got to season in layers. Got to. Often people will say, you know, what, what's the difference between the food I have at a restaurant and the food I have at home? Because it tastes different. Usually it comes down to seasoning. Seasoning and, and layers. And seasoning throughout. It really is a game changer. I always say if you season in layers while you're cooking, you don't have to do it at the table. That's right. I'm just going to check on these peaches super quick. Beautiful. And they need about Eating 30 it. more seconds. Yep. So we're going to start to plate this up. All right. So we've got Those our... Those tomatoes are absolutely gorgeous. These tomatoes are absolutely out of sight. Heirloom tomatoes, I think, are are not really understood in the beauty of them and how different they are in your dish and what they can bring to a dish. They're beautiful. And I mean, to be able to cut a tomato when it's green on the outside but yellow on it. Oh, you're doing it. <laughs> green on the in, or yellow on the inside. Come on. That's lovely. Man. So I'm gonna do this. Can you mix this in a bowl? Mm -hmm. Twenty-five thousand percent. Yep. Do you need one? Nope. No. We're gonna do this rustic. We're gonna do this family style, yeah. backyard barbecue style. Yeah, check peaches. Yeah. If you would do that for me, that would be great. Go on here. Lose this core. Tomatoes in. And look how beautiful, bright, and color. That's incredible. They're getting there. They're getting there. So, yeah. of course, we're gonna go on to this. A uh -huh. little bit of this vinaigrette here. Grab our spoon. So, I have a question for you. Okay, go ahead, shoot. When, you're, when you are adding a vinaigrette, a dressing, whatever it is, how much vinaigrette do you wanna add? I wanna add as little as possible to make it as effective as possible. I am not one for a overdressed salad. Mm -hmm. um, I always tell um, people who take my classes, oh, it's supposed to be a cold salad, not a hot salad. Don't put a coat on it. That's right. Right? Like, yeah. don't make it a winter coat. It's very light, and you will be amazed at how much a little goes a long way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the thing. You, you can add more, you can't take you away. You cannot take it away. Once it's on there, it's on there. And one of the things I love to do, I mean, you, you just saw I added a little bit of that vinaigrette, not right. much, right. to those tomatoes. I'm going to add a little more. Right. to the bread. We're going to give that a mix. Right. And that's kind of it. And what I'll often do is I'll serve a little bit of that extra vinaigrette on the side. The yeah, if you would take that off for me, that would sure. be lovely. No but I'll serve a little bit of this extra vinaigrette just in a bowl, pop it on the side. It kind of makes sense, but the thing is, is there's going to be some people at your, you know, your, your dinner party, your, back, your backyard barbecue, right. whatever it is, they, they might want more. That's cool. Add more. I just don't myself. So we're good to go over there. Perfect. And if there was smell o vision that existed through the interwebs, I wish that you could smell how beautiful yeah. that these peaches, that these tomatoes Gosh, smell. It smells so good. Perfect. So we're just going to do a little slice and dice on these guys. Yeah. Add a few of them on the top. Keep a few of them for me. Does that say summer or what? Right? So this beautiful. is summer in a dish, to be it honest. It is. And it's such a simple, a simple, a simple salad. Now, let me ask you, yep. could I add greens to this if I wanted to? A thousand percent. I mean, I, if you have fresh, you know, I have, I have an herb garden in my backyard. Right. One of, one of the, my 
joys in life is you know be watching that grow watching yeah. that do its thing if you have fresh basil to me that would be beautiful in this and classic right. uh, obviously you know parsley something like that okay. really just make mix it up you know mint also would be very very beautiful oh, yeah. and we're just gonna chuck that on there perfect so the last thing I'm gonna do but before I add a little vinaigrette in here is pistachios nice crunch lovely crunch so for me food is all about texture yeah balance a little sweet a little spicy You've got that nice hit of citrus, so obviously from the lemon, that's gonna add that crunch. Then we're gonna just go in with a little bit of this beautiful goat cheese, which is gonna add an incredible creaminess on top. Amazing. So while you're doing that, let's yeah. see, does anybody have any questions on our social media? Yeah, we've got a few. So what pellets do you guys use for this dish? So what pellets, pellets are we using um, for the dish? And throughout, we will be using the apple pellets from Traeger. Yep and they are absolutely amazing what is your favorite pellet to use? well it depends i mean i love them i love to mix it up it depends on what right. i'm cooking i mean i'm a big fan of cherry pellets right um you know especially if i'm doing steak something like that i because uh, i guess naturally just living on the coast i eat a lot of fish right uh so fish i would use alder um something something that's a little lighter right uh just to add that to obviously maple and right. fish right best friends right yeah right uh, I, I like my my personal favorite is the hickory I really love hickory. You love hickory? I do. What's your favorite I thing to cook with hickory? Every, almost everything because I do a lot of meat, so it, it works for me. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I love the hickory. That's great. And, I, and sometimes I even find myself mixing them a little bit. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Why not? It, it, you can. Like, it's, why not? <laughs> it's, you, you get to choose your own adventure when you it comes do, to food. You do, right? How uh, beautiful. And I'm a big believer in that. Simple, quick, Very simple. easy, Very fast. and entirely customizable and literally perfect for this time of year right definitely to feed a crowd i know that you have an incredible recipe that i love yes. that i'm excited to, to to learn from you how you yes. make it yes i have ratatouille i absolutely love ratatouille and for me this speaks summer it's all about summer right ratatouille is absolutely amazing and i'm going to um ask you to put that down of or course we're gonna Put do this right over here. Slide a little bit Perfect. so that I can use your. Oh, you're gonna use this right here, I'm of course. Use How can I? Put me to work. Yes, and put you to work a little bit. There we go. Thank you. Fan, Help the fan, old lady out. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. So ratatouille, what is it? What does it look like? It's beautiful. I think that when people see ratatouille, they definitely become very intimidated because it does. I mean, the movie made it look real hard. Like I'll tell you this right now, if this doesn't <laughs> taste better, then what's that mouse's name? I don't know. I can't remember. Remy. 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 If this Remy. doesn't, I, yeah. hey. He's not in my hat. I don't have. Well, he's not under my wig. So. No, no. It's gonna taste better for sure. It's definitely if gonna taste better. You can't make better. ratatouille better than a cartoon mouse. Come on now. I'm leaving. Come on now. So definitely, but it is a very simple dish. It looks extremely complicated, but it's not once you really get the elements of what it is. A beautiful tomato sauce at the bottom of the baking dish, covered and layered into this beautiful um, array of vegetables on top. Yeah. Top with cheese and herbs so it's very simple so for the ratatouille what we're going to do now when you go to traeger.com you will see these recipes and you'll notice that we've made some changes to them and we've customized them to the way that we like them and um but you make them however you want to you can follow the recipe that is on there or you can switch it up a little bit yeah okay so first we're going to add some onions and this is this is going to be your sauce. This is for my sauce, okay. right? Um, some bell peppers, both red and yellow. I love mixing my pepper color. Um, I usually stay away from green because it's overused to me. But I love that garden look to all of my elements, especially in this dish. Okay, we're gonna have some garlic in here, and we're gonna add some oil. And we're gonna sweat these on the induction. The Timberline XL has an induction cooktop on the side. And one of the best things about induction for me, and I use a lot of induction um, countertop mm. uh, 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 cook cooktops, yeah. um, is that it heats up extremely fast yeah. and it cools down just as fast. There's no residual heat on an induction, yeah. so that's one of the pleasures of it. And one of my favorite things about the fact that this grill has this induction is that I can stay outside. Right. You know, I the last thing I want to do is go inside and outside while I'm cooking. I just, right. if it's a beautiful day like Man. today, which to be honest, my Canadian blood is boiling right now because it, <laughs> it's, it's hot. hot. <laughs> no one told me that Salt Lake City is hot. You guys, you have, you all have snow-capped mountains here. 
Right. Uh, I was not prepared, it but hot. it's hot. But I, I, but I love that I get to stay outside. Right, you, you know? can do everything from here. So you can cook a full meal without, without ever having to go back into your house for anything because everything is all set right here on this beautiful Timberline XL. And I mean, obviously that's the bonus that you get to be outside. The great thing though, like you said, is induction is incredibly consistent, right. beautiful heat. Right. Uh, it's really easy to manage and control. It's just lovely. Right, okay, so a lot of times when people are making this dish, they get intimidated by the cut of the vegetables, right? Yeah. Everything looks so uniform, everything's the same thickness. Well, for that person who don't quite have those knife skills, you can always use your mandolin, right? And if you hand me one of the, oh, of course. Uh, just one of each or just one. Perfect. Um, now, of course, normally, if you are not familiar with the mandolin, you would use a guard, but I'm a professional. Wait, a mandolin's not an instrument? No, no, it's not. This is a mandolin. It can't, if you do, again, let me put, say it again. If you are not versed with the mandolin, please use a guard. Yeah. But this is gonna give you that uniform cut yeah. with all of your vegetables, whether they be big or small, right? And that's one of the important things about a ratatouille. You want everything to be as uniform as possible. Yeah. So just a couple of strokes down that blade. Okay. There we go, get to the meat of it and bam, uniform. So even yeah. if you don't have those knife skills, this dish should not intimidate you because yeah. there's a way around it, okay? So we're gonna clean this up here, all right? And because we have such a, thank you, a great culinary team, my sauce is already prepared. Now, let me also say, um, when you're making a sauce and you add your crushed tomatoes to mm. your sweated vegetables, you wanna cook this down till it's nice and almost dry because you don't want that bitter taste or and you don't want this sauce to be really watery yeah right because you don't want your you don't want it swimming you know yeah. you don't want it you, you didn't see that on the movie you don't want it swimming you want it to be nice and thick and adding the um herbs after you take it off the heat um keeps the herbs beautiful and bright yeah right so you want to make sure that you do that our culinary team already has some here set for me and just while you're grabbing that, I think uh, often vegetable dishes can be a little intimidating too. Uh, the, the one nice thing for me about knowing that as well, mm -hmm. when you cook vegetables, they're gonna naturally release liquid because there's yeah. liquid in vegetables. So yeah. if you think, oh no, this is a little dry, is it gonna dry out my dish? It's not, because the, the, the liquid's gonna release from this beautiful right. uh, veg right. uh, you know, rainbow of vegetables, kaleidoscope right. of vegetables that right. you've created. Right, so you just really wanna layer and uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of the tomato sauce right here in the middle. This is a labor of love. This is one of those dishes where, you're, where you can tell your husband, look, I've been in the kitchen all day <sighs> making you ratatouille. <laughs> what do you mean I can't have the purse? Yeah. <laughs> wow. So yeah, it is absolutely a labor of love. So you wanna continue to just layer these, and it doesn't have to be perfect, right? Like you can do this however you see fit. Put some yellow in there. Now I'm a little anal when it comes to some of this. But I mean, if you know, I, I, again, you, you look at a dish like this, it looks, it looks complicated to look yeah. at it, but you can see how it's not complicated at not all. Not at all. Just a little extra time, a little extra care and attention. Right. Food at the end of the day is, that care, intention, and love that you put right. into a dish. Right, that's what you put into it. You put you put your soul in it, you know? You, you give in, every time somebody sits down at your table and eat, they're eating that part of you that you put into your dish. So you wanna just continue to add this all the way around. And while we are doing that, do we have any questions on our social media side? Oh man, I would have to say making sure, well, the secret to a great tomato sauce is making sure that number one, you have really good tomatoes, mm -hmm. number one, and um, just cooking it long enough so that all those herbs and all those, those peppers and onions can all marry in together into a sauce. Now everybody has their little special combination of herbs. My mom used to put in, not a, you wouldn't taste the sugar, but it would cut some of that 
bitter um, bitterness of the tomatoes. So that was her little secret. And that's something that I do depending on what it is that I'm making. And I did that um, when I made this at home for my family because they are very particular. So I want to make sure that they're, you know, that they enjoy it. So they give me a hard time if they taste something that's, you know, Mom, this is bitter. Kids are, are, are the, uh, the the greatest critics. Oh. They, they, they don't let anything fly. Dude, they will eat you alive. <laughs> the other thing oh, I think definitely. that we said before, too, is just tasting. So yeah. it's like, you know, you want to taste throughout the process. Right. What's too salty for me is going to be not an, not as, you know, not salty enough for you exactly. and vice versa. Uh, the way to do that for me, you've got a bowl on your countertop full of spoons. You just taste. It, it's how you grow your palate. It's how you learn. Uh, and it's how, you know, maybe your tomato sauce needs a little more herb, a little more, a little more oil, a little more salt. You can adjust it. Mm -hmm. So um, now that the center is all filled in, you would put this in the oven for, or on your grill, I'm sorry, for uh, about 10 minutes to get that nice little smoke uh, injected into the, um, into the vegetables. Then you would take it out, cover it with foil, cook it for another about 20 minutes or 40 minutes with it, depending on how thick your vegetables are. Now that, that will definitely set the stage on how long this has to cook. You want yep. them fork tender. And then you're gonna take that foil off and you're going to cover it with your basil and your Parmesan cheese. Luckily, because of our great culinary team, we got like some straight magic happening oh, wow. right here. This bad boy is beautiful. You hear me? Look at him. What? Look at, look at it. <laughs> He is, I don't want to burn my hand because I was straight grab that. That smells incredible. It is absolutely amazing. So we want to give him just a little bit more fresh herb on here. Now this is my thing. Grade it or you want to grade or just grade? How do you like it? Fresh or already? I, I think it's what you have available. Yeah. Because to me, mm -hmm. cheese is next to godliness. Man, come on. And I would add cheese to everything. Right. I mean, I know it's probably a cardinal sin, but I'll add cheese to fish. To, I'll add cheese to anything. I'm that uh, lady at the Italian restaurant who's like, okay, just say when. And yeah, I'm just sitting and there when, looking at the when lady like, comes. lady, you ain't even going fast enough for me to say when. But we're going to take it easy. So this is absolutely gorgeous. I said I was going to take it easy. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Okay. And that is a beautiful ratatouille absolutely gorgeous and it looks incredible yeah uh obviously visually yeah. it's, Look at it's that. stunning it's so pretty and as it sits believe it or not it will thicken up a little bit mm. that sauce will continue to cook because of our carryover cooking and that sauce will thicken up a little bit and this is absolutely and, and if it doesn't that's fine yeah scoop it out drizzle some of that sauce over top of it and i mean eat away so could you make that in advance you could definitely make this in advance, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah, I would not wait till the last minute to make this. Yeah, yeah. Not at all. Which you is want, great. You want to start this in advance. If you're making it for, you know, dinner party, backyard barbecue, something like that, it's mm -hmm. lovely to have a side dish. Yeah. We were talking earlier, I think side dishes often aren't celebrated. Yeah. Uh, but to me, they can be the centerpiece. It can be the star of the show. Yeah. Because they're absolutely incredible. Usually we focus so much on that protein. Right. And we kind of forget and we kind of throw together a side dish real quickly. Right. If you were going to add a protein to this, what would you add? Ooh, um, a nice steak is always good. Let's clean this up real quick. A nice steak is always good, but I could see a nice piece, piece of thick white fish. I would love that. I'm not a big heavy eater, so the lighter the better. Um, for me personally, side dishes are key. I am that person who has nothing but side dishes on their plate. So this menu definitely speaks to me wholeheartedly. Mm. Okay. Yeah, definitely. All right. So as we move on, do we have any more questions from social media? Yeah. What were all of the vegetables, the vegetables that you used in the ratatouille? Okay. So all of the vegetables that we used in the ratatouille was, of course, the tomato sauce, which had um, tomatoes, garlic, bell peppers, and onions in there with a little bit of olive oil. Um, and then on top, we had squash, eggplant, zu uh, zucchini, and more Roma tomatoes. And you just layer that throughout, make it all pretty, and bake her away. Yeah. Yeah. And then Bob's your uncle. Bob and Bob. 
and Bob's your uncle, <laughs> right? That gives me every time. Bob's your Bob's uncle, your Na uncle. Nancy's your niece. Right, and so what you also wanna do, which I didn't mention, is make sure that you season that top when you put it in that grill and when it comes out. Yep. People forget to season when your food comes out because you do lose some of those um, elements of the salt, pepper, or spice that you have put in there, you lose some of that. So make sure that you reinforce that by when it comes out, hit it again with a little salt. Definitely, yep. yeah, season everything is season kind of the key. Everything. If you can take away a few things, it's cook more for your friends and family, spend more time at the grill, yeah. definitely cook more on your Traeger literally every day and right. season constantly Constant. and learn, learn, you know, how to grow a palate. Yeah. Speaking of, I'm gonna make a quick dish yeah. and throw it together that is, I feel like doesn't get enough love. Right. Chicken certainly gets deservedly enough love because yes. I don't know if we deserve to have something that tastes that good. <laughs> it is the, good. But I'm a, but chicken legs specifically and whole chicken legs yeah. to me don't quarters. get enough love. Right. Chicken quarters, uh, they're super affordable, super uh -huh. accessible. You can buy them basically anywhere. They are. Uh, and they're lovely and they're perfect grilled and you can really flavor them however you like. Right. That said, today I'm gonna do a smoked chicken uh, with the chimichurri. Yes. No. So Ooh. the first thing we need to do is we're gonna make that chimmy. Right. For me, the chicken leg is, like you said, very unappreciated, but at the same time, I think it's really the best part of the chicken. Like it's so juicy, so tender, and it, it, like you said, it will take on absolutely anything. You don't really, if you dry out a chicken quarter, Houston, you have a major problem because they're so hard to to do that too you know what i mean it's really uh, hard to dry out a chicken quarter a hundred percent a hundred percent and we're going to talk about that in a minute yeah. but the best way to do that is to use a meter probe yes that guarantees cooking that guarantees that it's cooked perfectly to temp right. every time we've we've said a few times today the timing on things really right. though you want you really especially when it comes to meat uh, you want to cook to temp right that's how you guarantee that juiciness that loveliness that comes out at the end of the dish. right and guess what the timber line XL comes with two meter probes. Which is amazing. There is no way you should ever mess up There's no another excuse. piece of meat with with this beautiful grill because it, give, it gives you all the tools you need to be successful. A hundred percent. Right. So there are about 15,000 recipes to make chimichurri. Yes. There's a classic. Yes. And then there's a bunch of other ones. Yep. To me, I love I love changing things up. Right. This certainly isn't a classic recipe, uh, but it's mine and it's what I love to make. Right. That said, you can customize this just like everything else that we're cooking today. Yep. Basically, with whatever you have. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna pop this in a blender. You know, you've seen uh, lots of chimneys that are that are broken down by hand. That's right. great. That's the classic way. Yeah. I'm gonna pop it in a blender today. Okay. Quick and easy and painless. Right to throw together. So basically, we're gonna use flat leaf parsley. Yeah. Uh, if you have access to cilantro, to basil, if you're making a fish dish, you wanna put tarragon in there, uh, maybe some mint would be lovely in there. Yeah. Really, just make it your own. Uh, but we're gonna go a little more classic with the flat leaf parsley today. Okay. Go in with some onions in here. Nice. Pop them in. Garlic, right? because garlic makes everything better. Always. I'm a big believer that if, it did, if a recipe says two cloves of garlic, you can use like six, <laughs> to be honest. Right, I've heard that before. But I come from- I've a, probably been guilty of that. I come from a French part of the world right. though, so that I'm comes by me honestly, thank you. Mm -hmm. So lemon, we're getting, we've got some, some citrus juice in here and lime, lime juice. You're nice. Which is gonna be lovely. Okay. Uh, and then that's basically it. So we're gonna pop this over here. We're gonna season this, of course. Okay. Beautiful bit of salt. You wanna, I'm gonna go a little extra with the By salt on here. By all means. And the last thing I'm gonna do is hit this with this beautiful red wine vinegar. Red wine. Mm -hmm. That I almost forgot, to be honest with you, but it is an absolute key, yes. essential to this yes, it is. for me. So pop this on here. Okay. I'm just gonna break that down for a minute. Right. And then what we're gonna do is just go in with oil real low, real slow. Right. We're gonna let that emulsify. Okay. Now, the one thing that we talked about earlier is if you have a really high powered um, blender, you can add a couple of uh, ice cubes in here to make sure that your herbs don't turn brown from the friction of the blender blade. And it'll give you a beautiful, nice, uh, bright uh, chimichurri or anything dealing with herbs for that matter. A hundred percent. Right. The biggest thing, of course, if you're gonna use a blender, you wanna just give that a nice little Nice little push. 
Yeah, nice a little, 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 little scrape down on here. Right. That I, I, I've heard that ice cube trick one time before. Yeah. But only one time, and I, it's very cool. Yeah, I, it is. I've tried it, and it, you know, I was amazed. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have been amazed, but I was definitely amazed. That is looking absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Now, with this chimichurri, is there, what other meats or any other types of um, proteins you can use or put chimichurri? Honestly, there's nothing that you can't put it on. Right. I hope you can hear me over this. Is apologize for the, bl blenders are loud. They are. We went full on Ferrari mode on that you blender. You did, you did. Which that's now what the one thing that I do like about chimichurri is it doesn't have to be macerated. Like you really do want to see some of those herbs in there. A hundred percent. Right. And I mean, look at that. Come on now. That there is you go, Dennis. Oh, I beautiful. See I see you. Okay. Beautiful. That is gorgeous. Again, with everything. Right. This was our onion spoon. Go ahead going. And taste it. Can I? A little taste on there. I'll just set this off to the side. Oh, that's what's up. That's really good. Quick and easy, and obviously, there's a big hit, a big, big punch of citrus in there. Nice. Red wine vinegar, you want that, because to me, that cuts through this beautifully. Right. Chicken legs, Chicken quarters. Legs, quarters. Lovely. We're going to marinate these. To me, anything poultry right. needs to be either marinated or brined. Uh -huh. Can you cook it and it be delicious without doing that? Of course. Right. But if you can. If you can give yourself a little extra time, it will absolutely be a game changer in the dish. Right. So on here with a little bit of oil. Now I'm going to go all the way off, all the way off. Yeah, tell me. Can you marinate that chicken with that chimichurri? Of course. And it would be amazing. Of course. It would be absolutely Dang. amazing. Absolutely amazing. Woo. Coriander. There's Beautiful. bashed coriander seeds. Love, nice. Lovely. Nice. We've got smoked paprika. Yes. I love, love smoked paprika paprika so much. Obviously, we're going to add a good hit of smoke to the dish it. as a byproduct of it being on the Traeger. Yes. Um, so for me, I'm just giving it an extra little bit of what right. we're already going to add to it. smoke. And we're going to go in here, and I, I go heavy with that yeah. too. Uh, lime zest lime that we've got zest. on here. We're going to hit that with lime zest. To me, I love to be able to use the whole citrus. Yeah. Uh, it's le you know, less wasteful, Most of course, definitely. and a good pitch of salt. Right. So really the chicken is going to be a little reminiscent of the chimichurri because you're gonna, where you're not actually using the lime juice, you're using the lime zest. You have that, um, that herb element in there. I mean, just with that citrus, you're gonna be able to taste it throughout. It's not gonna lose, you're not gonna lose any of that. Not at all, no. And right. I mean, they, they're obviously, they complement each other exactly. really, really well. Exactly. So we're gonna go on here, just give this a nice little massage. Nice. And then that's gonna go on the grill, but yeah. before we're gonna do that, like you said, we have our incredible meter probe. Yes. So for me, the thing about the meter probe is, aside from the fact that it's literally one of the best inventions in the history of the Absolutely. culinary world, uh, is it guarantees cook time. Every time. For me, we, we spend time, effort, hard-earned money on beautiful cuts of meat and protein, and right. you want it to be cooked perfectly or at least right. as you want to set yourself up for success yes so for me knowing that you're cooking to temp beautifully uh -huh. is essential right and also what it does the, the best thing for me about the meter probe is it has an app situation which uh -huh. is a complete game changer that you can go in pick your protein pick your doneness so of course we're doing chicken today 165 degrees fahrenheit that that's our north star that's right. what we want we need to get to mm -hmm. uh, obviously if you're doing a skirt steak like you're going to do in a minute i believe right, right. uh you would want you know very different temp very different cook time but it will ding on your on your phone on right. the app once it's done you'll pull that of course when it comes to to protein like you had alluded to before, there's residual heat right. within that protein once you pull it off the grill. That will take you to the, to the beauty. Absolutely, so what this will do is it will ding your phone when you need to pull that off the grill so that you are just basically left with the juiciest, most incredible chicken of your absolute entire life. Yep. So we're gonna pop this right in here. Right, I think the meter pro takes away the intimidation of big meat, you know? A hundred percent, thank you. are not scared of it. A hundred percent. So we're gonna pop this on the grill. Yep about 45 minutes to an hour uh -huh. if you're looking for a gauge but really again it's temp it's when the meter probe dings on your phone right that's what's gonna happen right so we're gonna go to our social media and see if we have any questions 
Uh, use olive oil. Olive oil. You just use straight olive oil. Olive oil of your choice. Yep. You definitely could. Yep. Yep. Any oil of your choice. I mean, we all have our little go-tos that we use, right? And uh, you can pretty much use any um, any olive oil, um, avocado oil, grapeseed oil. I mean, whatever you normally would use for a dressing, you can definitely use it for that. I do. I, I mix, do I ever mix pellets? Yes, I mix my pellets quite often. My favorite is the hickory, but um, I will, I'll play with it because it's just like any ingredient, right? Those pellets are an ingredient to your food. They're, you know, injecting flavor in there and it's okay to play around with them. Don't just be straightforward, you know, mix them up a little bit, yeah. see what you like. Food should be fun. It should be. It should be experimental, fun. It should right. be literally the thing that you look forward right. to every single day that you, you, we get the joy of cooking right. at the end of right. the day. So for right. me, mix that up, have fun. I want to pull this chicken it, off the grill while you're it does. It takes the stress out of, you know, don't make it, don't overthink it. It's food, it's what you like. It's not what everybody likes. It's what you like and, and what your family is going to enjoy. So play with it. You never know. I absolutely um, love mixing my pellet, pellets. That chicken looks amazing. Uh huh. Yes. It yes. The meter does the meter pro work with any Traeger? Yes, it does. It works with absolutely any. That is beautiful. Any Traeger. Um, that is gorgeous. Um, it it works. You know what? Indoors the and outdoors. The best really. compliment that I'm going to get tonight yeah. is the fact that you literally couldn't answer the question because you're. <laughs> The chicken looks so Looking good. at the I'm chicken, like, so I'm like, all right, I did. Something <laughs> you happened, took right? Took my words away. Right. So you can use it if you do not, which I would hope everyone would have a grill because, you know, it's the best thing in the world to have as an alternative. But even if you just have a meter probe, you can use it outside of grilling. Definitely, you can use it in your oven. Um, I've even heard um, that you can use it um, in sous so the meter probe is definitely um, a great tool to have. This it makes you, even if you're not a big griller or you're not used to, you know, grilling large or thick pieces of meat, it will make you look like a pro every time. A hundred percent. I mean, yeah. go out. If you don't have a Traeger, immediately go to TraegerGrills.com, order your first Traeger. Definitely. Uh, and if you don't have a meter probe, get that. Yes. It's a, it's a literal game changer. Yeah. Smoked chicken, yeah. paprika, coriander, that chimney on top, a little bit on side because you're going to want to dip that chicken into it, absolutely. Nice little bit of salt right at the end, just as a finisher. Yep. That skin looks absolutely as crispy as possible. And I would eat this literally Monday through Sunday. Yeah, that's, that's what's up right there. <laughs> chicken look, I, I've fallen in love. That chicken looks so good. 100%. It's absolutely beautiful. So let's keep this ball rolling. The next menu, I mean, the next uh, recipe that we're going to make is the grilled skirt steak with peach salsa. Talk about fresh, talk about uh, light, even though it's steak, it's still going to be extremely light. So let's get going. The first thing we're going to do is pull out our skirt steak that has been marinating and um, red wine vinegar, uh, onion powder, some salt, some pepper, very simple, straightforward. Ideally, you would um, marinate this for 24 hours in your refrigerator and then put it onto your grill. Now, when you go to the store, um, sometimes when you buy skirt steak or those long pieces of meat, you'll have that small part at the end. Mm. We, uh, the, the fantastic culinary team has already squared this off for me. Now, this is gonna be a quick cook, right? It doesn't take much for a skirt steak. It doesn't have to be on a grill for a long period of time. So very fast, two to five minutes on each side, take it off, let it rest, and you know, voila, you're all done. Mm. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on, but while I'm putting on my skirt steak, I need for you yep. to help a sister out and cut up my already grilled peaches. Put like me to we, work. Yes, already grilled peaches and they've been cool. We need them cold for, or cooled off for the salsa. We don't want those too hot. Beautiful. Okay. These look lovely. Nice bit of char on top of yes, these peaches. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. 
Let me put that in my pocket. So just a fine dice on these? Yes, just a fine dice. Perfect. And that sizzle is one of the best sounds Man, come on. on planet Earth. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Okay. So if you didn't have, you know, we're doing this with peaches. Obviously, we're celebrating peach season mm -hmm. tonight. You, you guys have noticed we've used a lot of peaches. Uh, there's a reason. They're incredible right now. Uh, yeah. You didn't have, you don't have peaches where you live. What, what could you mix this you up? You could with? do this with mango. Yep. Right. You can do it with maybe even some cherries, like a nice little quick smoke on some cherries, mm -hmm. if you wanted to. It's totally up to you. Like, a, like we've been saying throughout, this, um, these, these recipes are very, you know versatile there's no cookie cutter you know thing for these recipes you can switch out the fruit however you see fit or whatever it is that you like to so just make it I your just own need a bigger bowl to mix my salsa you got one over there oh, it's all hmm. good so you can see those peaches are like i love it when you get the peaches off the grill and you have some that are still firm and then some that aren't as firm yeah. because then they just they really marry together. And then this juice, don't you dare throw that juice away. That juice is money. <laughs> that juice don't is money. Don't you dare throw that juice away. It's, it, to me, it hurts my heart when I see that, that, that being kind of poured down the sink or tossed in right. the bin. That, that's right, 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 that's right, right, flavor. Right, right. right, that is flavor. So we're gonna just go ahead and I'm gonna mix a little bit of the salsa up just right here in this bowl. Perfect. Can I take some? You take what, however oh, much right. you need. Yep. And I'm gonna give you that juice because I don't want you yep. to get upset at me. Okay, there we go, thank you. We have the best culinary team ever. Okay, so I'm gonna take all your peaches. Perfect. And this is something that you don't just necessarily have to eat with steak. You can have it with chicken, fish, chips, Whatever you want. It's nice, refreshing, and ice cold. Oh. I'm a, I'm a, I, I said to you earlier, I'm a self-admitted, like, midnight, I'm going to go to the fridge and snack. Right. Uh, with the fridge door open with a spoon. Right. I would eat that. Yeah. Literally, like, by, it, it would be gone. Without a doubt. So, very, very bright colors here. We have some tomato. And we are not going to shy away from putting all of it in here. Some more bell peppers. See what I mean by summary? Definitely. Some red onion. For spice, and I love spicy food. Some chopped jalapenos. Come on now. We got some beautiful herbs we're just gonna sprinkle in. What herbs do you have in there? Is I that basil? this is cilantro. That's cilantro. Cilantro, That yeah. is cilantro. Beautiful. Yes, yeah, some chili powder. Go ahead. Come on. <laughs> some honey for just a little added sweetness, mm. okay? And, and that honey's gonna help cut the, the spiciness along with the right. peaches of the, the jalapeno. Right, yeah. lime juice. Now, if you don't have lime, you can definitely use lemon. You just need to acid in there, right? All right, and if you can check my skirt steak. 100%. Yes. Go ahead and flip them over. Ooh. Nice, thank you. All right, we're gonna give this a nice little stir. And before I add, oh, it looks so good. Before I add any salt and pepper, I'm gonna give this a taste just so I can see where we are. You wanna taste it, Dennis? I do wanna taste, I, I was gonna taste it without you offering, <laughs> to be honest. I'm gonna take both, both spoons, actually. Right. But I'm not waiting. Oh my God. It's lovely. The, the, the sweetness of the peaches, the crunchiness of that pepper right. as well gives it a nice texture. You know, the one thing that I love about using fresh ingredients is sometimes if you taste it before, you'll find out you don't need that much salt and pepper. Yeah. Right? Versus just going in and like throwing it in light. How did that steak look? That steak, we, we, we need a couple more minutes on that. Okay. I think the thing is, but I'll let you, I'll let you choose your own adventure. That'd be for fine. Your recipe. That'd be fine. Uh, to me, the thing is, is when you have the best ingredients, and there's been a few questions about how do you, how do you make the best tomato sauce? How do you right. make whatever? 
to me, all, everything comes down to ingredient first. Right. You know, and, and so you have beautiful in-season peaches. You have beautiful chicken that you got from a local butcher that you mm -hmm. bought. You know where you're sourcing from. Mm -hmm. It's going to taste incredible. And then you don't really need to do much Not at all. to it. Not at all, because you want to keep that freshness and keep and, and keep and maintain that integrity of the ingredients that you're using. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to set this on to the side. We're going to wait on our steak and we are going to go and look at it again. Give it a good flip. We're going to give it a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. But while we are doing that now, let's talk about this beautiful Timberline. Can yeah. we talk about the grill? 100%. Every time I see this grill at the store, I want to ask it for its autograph. I'm yeah. not kidding you. I do. It is absolutely amazing to me. Do you take selfies with it? I, I have. I did. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. I totally took a selfie. Did I just call you out on something? <laughs> you, you did. How did you know? I apologize for I that. totally I took a selfie with that I publicly called you grill. out on something. I did. I, I prayed over it. I did everything. Like, oh. Lord, please send me one. <laughs> definitely. I definitely did that. So. Um, let's just talk about the menu again yeah. and just talk about how full of flavor it is and how beautiful it is. Yeah. And out of all of these dishes, which one do you think that you would make like again, which one? Well, I mean, I, I, I'm, sure you make I'm a little again, biased because I would make all of them again, right? even yours right. uh, that I just learned today. Right. For me, the thing is, is I, I believe, I'm a firm believer that the best food in the world is right. fun, is accessible, is attainable, mm -hmm. and is beautiful. Right. And for me, it's, you know, we want to make recipes that we're proud of. Right. Uh, we want to be proud to serve them to our friends, to right. our family, to our loved ones. But we want to, we want to know that they're going to, you know, they're going to be quick and easy often to throw yeah. together, or, or at least they're manageable. Yeah. And, af and But the North Star is, we want them to be delicious. Most so for me, the, all of these are all of that, their family style, right. uh, they're quick and easy to throw together. Right. Uh, as long as you give them a little time to marinade exactly. and do their thing. And, do their uh, thing. and then, you know, we plate them up a little beautiful, take a little extra time. Right. Uh, and then, you know, season to taste. Right. And you're, you, it's, it's, it's a knockout. And you have a terrific way of capturing the beauty of food that you cook. I mean, your pictures are like absolutely, they're, Gorgeous pictures. Gorgeous well, thank pictures. you. I, so, I'm a firm believer. I want to just inspire people to spend, like I said earlier, spend more time at the table. If I can do that with one people or 20 people or however many people, <laughs> Man, I'm going to continue to do it. I was like, what? <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and take my skirt steak off because, again, a quick, a quick hook on this skirt steak, yep. right? Yeah, we're there. Me. Now, the one thing about um, one thing that I do know is that as much as I want to right now, I'm fighting myself not to do it. I want to cut into this, but we can't. We have to let that skirt steak rest a little bit and let it um, calm down a little. When you take a piece of meat off the grill and you go to cut it, then you say, oh my gosh, I need like milk, water, Kool-Aid, juice, wine because my steak is really dry and that's because you cut it too soon. Yeah. Let it calm down a little bit and then you can cut into it. Um, we have a beautiful salsa that we're gonna put onto here and you can see it's already starting to juice. Look at that. So that's gonna go on the steak yeah. and it's gonna be absolutely gorgeous. That's flavor. It's all flavor, right, exactly. So we're gonna set that there. To me, I think that I've, I've, I see often people ask about steak, so I, thank you for bringing that up. Right. People say all the time, they're like, I don't, I always overcook my steak. Mm -hmm. It's always dry. Mm -hmm. uh, at, or, or, and I'm like, well, it, is it? And because they're cooking it to temp, I'm like, oh no, you just cut it right away. Right. So all of those beautiful juices, they kind of, they came out of that. The right. thing is, is you, you, you spent 24 hours marinating this, right? Right. And then it goes on the grill. Right. On this incredible grill kissed with that smoky, beautiful wood fire deliciousness, right. and then you cut into it right away, it's, it's a shame, honestly. It, so you kind of really want to give it that extra time that it needs. Right, right. You want to just let it definitely do its thing. We're going to take this and add just a little bit of green. Not that it crazy needs it, but I'm all about, I'm standing beside you, so I feel like I need to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it looks beautiful. It does. It looks so cute. Yes, yeah, nice. 
Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and plate it. We're not going to cut it right away. Uh, it looks so good. Right? Well, I know that I'm, get, I'm getting a wave from my favorite social media expert yes. over here that I think has a question for us. Okay. So the question is, can, would you still be able to use a meter probe with a cut like this? I, I would say that you really wouldn't need the meter probe for this because it's a quick cut, right? You wouldn't put a skirt steak on for, you know, a very long period of time, right? You, this is two to five minutes, the meter probe, it's gonna take you, you know, longer than that to get everything dialed into your probe. So for this, it would just be a very quick cook. Now, anything thicker than this, yes. Definitely, okay. definitely. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah, I mean, I would definitely, you know, it's something like this, if it's literally gonna be on for two, three minutes, uh, five minutes at the most, yeah. could you do it? Of course, you, you absolutely could you do could. it. Uh, I, to be, and be completely honest, I'm not sure I would. Uh, but that said, I, put, I literally use it in everything. Obviously I cook fish a lot, so salmon is something I cook often. Right. Meter probe goes into that every time it goes on the grill. Right. Okay, I'm done fiddling. Yeah, for the 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 croutons. Yeah. yeah. So the question is, for the croutons, did they go on the Traeger? They absolutely did. Yeah. Uh, that is my favorite way to make croutons. Absolutely. Olive oil, salt, pepper, some rosemary, thyme if you have it, garlic if you want uh, on the grill. Uh, we were talking earlier. You could even add uh, some some sh uh, shaved, freshly shaved. Um, uh, Parmigiano Reggiano or Parm, mm -hmm. wherever you get it from, uh, right at the end, that's going to be lovely, but definitely you want it on the Traeger. Right. Right. Awesome. Um, what's your favorite cut of steak besides? Ooh, I'm going to let you answer that first. My favorite cut of steak is a tomahawk. <laughs> I absolutely love tomahawk steaks. I, am, I, I love cooking them. I love the way that they look. I love the way that they present and they're challenging for me. So I absolutely think that they are my, that's my most favorite. And they're tender, like, come on, with the meter probe, I have yet to have a fail with the tomahawk steak. A hundred percent. Yeah. I would say tomahawk steak. I'm gonna sneak right over here you and get, get right in By your all way. Means, help yourself. Uh, I would say tomahawk steak if it wasn't that you already said tomahawk steak. <laughs> but I will say, uh, legit, mine is a, Porterhouse mm -hmm. or a Tuscan T-bone, depending upon where you come from, or okay. Bisteca alla Florentina. Okay. Uh, that to me is absolutely incredible. And I had the good fortune of eating one uh, in, in Tuscany a while right. back, and it literally changed the game for me. I thought it was a ribeye, and then I went and I had that, and I'm like, okay, game's changed. I was just about to say, don't sleep on a good ribeye. Like, this, it, it is definitely another good cut of meat. So as you guys can see, we have a beautiful, beautiful spread here. Now, for resources and things that will help us continue on this beautiful journey, especially in the summertime, the best place for you to go and a place that I often frequent is the Traeger app. Um, we were talking earlier and I was telling you about my cooker's block that I get sometimes, when, especially when my family is being extra picky and they're like, no, no, no. I go to the Traeger app and get some inspiration to finally get like a yes, right? Yeah. And my, my family loves the grill, so they know if I'm looking at the Traeger app, it's going on a grill. So those, that is one place to go and get some extra inspiration. You can cook the recipes that are on there or you, like we've been saying throughout, change them up. Yeah, and mm -hmm. definitely, of course, the app uh, download that immediately if it's yes. not on your phone. Yep. Traeger.com is yep. a wealth of resource and knowledge, like we said earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, go on it often. Uh, there's updates there. Get on the email list. Be in the know right. about what's you know down the pipeline because uh, there's always new exciting things that are happening. If you're not right. following Traeger uh, Grills on social media, what are you doing? <laughs> Come on. This, this. Right now, take your phone out. <laughs> totally and on. subscribe, follow, <laughs> share with, on. put that on your, actually, I'm gonna follow all of y'all. <laughs> you said y'all. You, <laughs> you went down uh, south. You need to. You need, definitely need to be following Traeger. I yes. just want to stay informed because obviously, you know, there's there's classes, uh, there, there's events like this that yes. happen. Yes. Uh, there's new products that are being launched. You yes. want to be the first to be in the know. Yes. The Traeger community is like no other on the planet. We know no. you want to support everything, so no. definitely make sure that you're involved in every single way. Right. 
So we have covered a lot today. We have, I mean, we've done a lot in this short amount of time and we could not have done it without, without um, the Traeger culinary team. You ready to like, dig, like no, no, you keep going. <laughs> you keep going. I'm, I, I've been staring at this for long enough. <laughs> you ready to dig in. I just want to say thank you to everyone at Traeger headquarters, the culinary team, um, and Traeger Nation for tuning in and watching this mm. episode. It has been a pleasure, a joy. It's always great to see everybody and to come together to a beautiful spread. I love a family meal. Like I, yeah. this speaks to me. I have nine brothers and sisters. This is home, right? When you are able to sit around and have good food, have good conversation. And we have definitely done that. Thank Wait. you. You have Four nine. You have best. nine brothers or sisters. Yes, I do. I'm number five out of ten, honey. Number wow. five out of ten. It. This is not enough. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Not Fair enough. No. I need. To, we need to up our game. Man, come on. But um, thank you to everybody. And um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day. Do. Oh well, thank you. At the end of the day, we just want you to cook with confidence. We right. want you to leave here feeling empowered. Uh, that you're. In, you're able to make better dishes tomorrow than you do today. Right. And uh, you know, some of that is tasting, some of that is experimenting. Mm -hmm. Often what that is, is just getting around a big table with people you love and spending time at the grill, experimenting a little bit and cooking just incredible right. dishes. Before we go though, I wanna ask, do we have any last questions? One last question. Somebody asked, do y'all deliver? <laughs> Listen. We do for a small fee. <laughs> <laughs> I could not have said that any better myself. Uh, I, we don't deliver because this is not, there are, there, like we said earlier, there, it takes a village to create this. And I'm yeah. sure this food is not going to go uh, uneaten. That's yes, for sure. Yes, definitely. But it let, I'm telling you, smell a vision need, somebody need to do it because you can see that it is all absolutely beautiful yeah. and beautiful food that tastes good. It's like a double treat. I want to try my steak. No, you know what? I cut the steak up. You can try that. Let me try the chicken. hundred percent. Let's do it. I'm going to sneak right in front of you. Okay. I can't cut it with two forks. Dip that in that sauce now. That steak's I beautiful. Juicy, lovely. The marinade is yeah. beautiful. I'm going I'm to dip it. My husband always says, you there take you go. the biggest bites ever. No, I appreciate that. You, you want a saucy bite, actually. Let me tell you something. I used to get in trouble for dancing and eating. So I just kind of do a slight sway because I don't want my mom to come back and be like, girl, I told you don't do that. But yeah, that is what's up. That I, is so good. I'll tell you this. I'd, if it wasn't that it's 100 degrees and right. I'm completely drenched in sweat, and <laughs> although I know I look probably pretty right. good, I'd hug you right now, but I'm not going to do that. Thank you for saying that. Up. That is absolutely phenomenal. I was about to do it, but I'm not. There you go. Let me try to steak. So tender. Lovely, tender. A quick cook on a good piece of meat. You can't go wrong. No, definitely not. It's beautiful. I mean, I guess the last thing that I'll say. Right. <laughs> before we literally dive into this right. uh, is thank you to you guys for tuning in thank you to watch for watching yeah. for spending this time with us uh, hopefully you learned something hopefully, hopefully if, 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 if nothing else that you are inspired to create yes. better dishes the Traeger community is unlike any community in the unlike. food world on planet earth right and I am so fortunate that I get to be a part of that every day that I get the honor yeah. of cooking on this incredible grill uh, and feeding people beautiful food and you guys help allow that to happen so thank you for being here with us right I can honestly say that, you know, winning MasterChef was a highlight, but becoming part of Traeger Nation and being a part of this beautiful community was definitely, hands down, another great, great, great uh, win for me. So thank you again to Traeger for having me. And until next time. Until next time, uh, definitely post what you cook online. Yes. We're, we're going to be watching. Yes.